Hey guys, Derek here from Fun with Linux. So anyways, this week I'm gonna be talking about my ditching of Google services. So I've whittled it down to about, I think two Google services, maybe one that I still use in my life. And I'm working on that, but there's a huge reason behind this. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. This isn't something that I just thought up out of nowhere you know, like a totally original idea where I'm just like, hey, I'm just gonna ditch Google services. No one's ever done that before. No one in the open source community has ever brought that up before. That's not it at all. You see, I listened to a podcast called The Linux Action Show. You may have heard of it. It's a great podcast. I've been a listener since 2011, early 2011. And one of the co-hosts there, the main guy, Chris Fisher, awesome guy, has said constantly, you know, about how he thinks proprietary services are taking over our lives and how they are a bad thing. And over the years, I've thought, well, you know, Chris, I think that's kind of inconvenient and I really disagree and I'm just fine with my Google services on my proprietary phone and my proprietary uh, thing. So I thought, you know, Chris finally got to me. It was just, I got a wild hair and I'm like, you know what? This is a good idea. Number one, you guys would like it in a video, but number two, I just think that if I'm going to be passionate about open source, I need to put my life where my mouth is. So that's what I'm doing. And uh, so let's get into that. So I feel I should start off with email. Being someone who is a millennial, someone who is 26 years old, was born with the internet always being around, grew up with MySpace in high school, has always had social networking in the forefront of their life. I have always hated email. I've never really had to use it in a business setting until I started writing professionally and corresponding with people making videos and contracting and stuff. So I do realize that email has had its place, but I've always hated it. So I've always thought, you know, I should just use Gmail because I trust Google with my data. I don't anymore, but I used to say that. And uh, Gmail is a great product and I've been using it for close to 10 years, I think. I got it when it first came out in high school maybe earlier, I don't remember. Uh, these days, I've just been using the Android app and uh, mainly where I get my email and uh, on the web interface on my desktop. So I've recently signed up for mail.com and I tried that out for a bit and it was pretty great. And then I decided, you know what? I wanna own my data. So I decided to buy a domain name. And uh, so I bought a domain name, I used the webmail feature and I set it up in Thunderbird and I set forwarding from my Gmail to my Thunderbird client, and I have Aquamail for Android, and I'm very happy with it. And uh, I think my mind isn't totally changed because I do think it's great to just go to the email web interface, like with stuff like Outlook or, or Gmail or whatever, but with this feature, I have it integrated into the GNOME desktop. I have a system tray for Thunderbird. You know, I'm using IMAP or whatever it is. I, I don't really understand how the, any of that works. It's not running on my own server. It's just on a domain somewhere else, but I get access to all the data. I'm very happy with it. And uh, again, this isn't a huge part of this video because because I don't really use it for personal correspondence. It's A-OK -okay in my book. I have no issues with disabling the Gmail app in my phone on my Nexus 5X, and I don't miss it at all. So that's one service that I've let go so far. So some of you might know, I'm a writer, I'm a blogger, I do stuff for numerous websites, and I also write a lot of scripts and outlines and stuff, and also write in my own personal time to get my head out there. I have a personal blog that I rant on that I'm not sharing with anybody here, but you know, I always kind of liked Google Drive. I love the Google web app concept. I love that I can just open my browser and start writing. Everything's saved. Everything's taken care of. Some people that I know think it's stupid and they need a client, but I've never had a problem with web apps. So this one is especially hard for me, but I ended up switching to Abbey Word. And now before everyone asks me, why didn't you switch to LibreOffice? The thing is, it's too bloated. It's got all these apps. I just need something to write in. I don't really care about calc or presentations or anything. So I just switched to Abbey Word. Very happy with it. I wrote the script outline that I'm using right now and it's been wonderful. Not really any problems. Don't really miss Google Drive that much as much as I thought I would because Abbey Word is very, very fluid. Works great on my GNOME 3.20 desktop on Arch Linux. Very, very happy with that. And uh, don't really have any complaints. Don't really miss anything. I have all my documents backed up in a NFS share or a Samba share. I have both. All right, so this next section isn't gonna be very long. It's just a quick little thing here. So when I first started taking notes, I always used to keep text files. And then I heard about Evernote and that was when I was first starting blogging. And I thought, you know, Evernote is really cool. And then Google Keep came out and I 
ditched Evernote as soon as it came out and I have not looked back until now. So I ended up switching to Simple Note and I'm very happy with Simple Note and I put all my notes in there. It's basically Google Keep, except it's not from Google. Google doesn't own my data and can't look through my notes. As far as I know, it's open source and it's an Electron app. Uh, it works on Android and uh, there's synchronicity. I can keep my technical notes, my code stuff, my IP address uh, information, shell scripts, and it supports tagging and everything. Basically works like Google Keep. The only thing it doesn't do is it doesn't sort and add images to notes and it doesn't do pictures as far as I know. But honestly, I never use those features and uh, I don't really miss them. I never used them before. So and again, I'm just finding myself less dependent and less needy for these Google services. And I just feel like it was out of laziness, but we'll get more to that at the end of the video. All right, so music streaming is probably gonna be the longest part. Honestly, this part is really important to me and I'm a huge fan of music. I mean, everyone is, but I am a collector of music. I listen to a lot of different stuff all the time. I have something on in one way or another. So I tried this before, before I decided to replace Google Music with Samba. Just put all my files on my Samba server and uh, after that, just access it with the file manager and grab stuff on my phone when I want it and I really didn't like it. So I ended up going with Subsonic. Now I can hear you guys in the comments telling me Subsonic isn't open source anymore, not a good idea, etc. Well, you should know that I originally went with Madsonic. Now Madsonic is an open source fork of this same project. I used it for about half a week and I really, really, really liked it a lot. The only real problem that I ever had with it was the UI and just the overall professionalism of the tool just was not there. It was really gross looking, it was really clunky. The premium services, which I tried to sign up for, took forever to sign up for, just not very professional. And this is where I bring pragmatics into it. This is my bottom line. At the end of the day, I want to own my data. That's why I wanted to get rid of Google. It wasn't because I'm an open source zealot. I've always been pragmatic. I want to embrace more open source tools if they're good for the job. But as it stands, Subsonic, it's just the most polished thing I've ever used. I found an open source client on Android and uh, this server version is, is open source by the way. So it works really good and I'm really happy with it. I paid for a year of it. There's no going back and honestly, it does everything that I want Google Music replacements to do, which is let me stream my entire library at any time. Let me pin and cache music that I listen to for later, for permanent or for temporarily. And let me sync with my server and playlists. And so this is a very, very important thing to me. This music is the most important thing that I replaced with this Google thing. So this one is gonna be quick because honestly, I was looking to ditch Google Hangouts anyways. I switched to Telegram. It's an open source client. Of course, the back end is closed source, not ideal, but it's the best tool for the job. And uh, I got all my clients to switch over. I just think Telegram is a superior tool. It's just a superior product. I'm very impressed with it. I have no complaints. All right, so now let's talk about everybody's favorite thing to talk about, cloud storage. So I gotta be honest with you guys. I'm not gonna delete my Google Drive account or my Dropbox account. Dropbox because it lets you use HTTP to get your files directly, and I use that for shell scripting because it's great. That's literally all I use it for. Google Drive, I used to have a terabyte of storage, and I still do, it's running out in January, but I've had it for two years when I bought a brand new Chromebook to hack on, and I basically just put all my stuff in there. I've installed the Nextcloud Snap package on my server, and it's really, really nice. Everything just works. I'm looking into like CalDev and stuff, and hopefully that'll be an answer to one of the services that I still use, which is I still use Google Calendar. The reason is it's just the best tool I can think of. So I'm gonna see if there's like a CalDev thing in uh, Nextcloud that lets me use my own localized calendar system, sync with my phone and everything. And, uh, and other than that, I still use Google Contacts. It's invaluable on Android. Downloads all my phone numbers right away. So if I can find something good to replace that, which I'm again thinking Nextcloud, then I'll be completely free of Google services. There's nothing of theirs that I use and depend on anymore. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you like this. Please subscribe and uh, I will see you next time.